Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and on my way down to Texas with this thousand gallon trailer pit, I decided to stop at Porter Road here in Nashville and ask them if they can show me some butcher cuts and I'll take you guys along for the ride. If you want to win this smoker, you can go to getentertowin.com slash madscientistbbq or just click on the link in the description. You can go buy a coffee mug, help support the channel and a veteran owned small business and ultimately having a chance to win this thing and hopefully making some great barbecue. But we're going to go inside and learn what a butcher can teach us. I'm really fortunate to be here with James, co-founder of Porter Road. James is going to go over different butcher's cuts and why it's important that you need to know about them. So what do we have on the table right here? On the table we have right here is a variety of different cuts and the way that we categorize butcher cuts here at Porter Road is two different sections. There's your classic butcher cuts okay. which were pulled out at the packing house by the butchers that would were destined for ground beef or somewhere worse. And then now we have our modern day seam cut butcher cuts okay. as well, which are gonna be because our animals are much bigger, we're able to pull out muscle by muscle, seam by seam, and create these new, delicious, amazing cuts out of it. Excellent, so these historical butcher's cuts, would this be stuff that was getting taken home 100 years ago, or when in history was this something that was common? So once we saw the modern day packing house, so we're a little 120, 150 years ago, once we started concentrating when we were processing and slaughtering meat, they're focused on speed efficiency. Right. So they're pulling out those main money cuts. We call them the designer cuts. Okay. And it's your ribeye, your strip, your filet. So these three cuts right here in particular, with our classic butcher cuts, these were usually destined for the grinder and your ground beef. The one right here in the middle is one of my favorite. It is the hanger steak. It is the only steak in the entire animal that there is one of, which is pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. As a former biology teacher, I'm thinking bilateral symmetry, right? So a mirror on the other side. If it's, if it's only one, is it in the center of the animal? It literally hangs in the middle of the cavity. Hence the name, hanger it steak. Is, it is part of the diaphragm. So it's part of the breathing of the animal. Oh. So it's an extremely hard working muscle. It's constantly moving. That's why you can see the dark, dark color. It's gonna be very minerally, very irony, very delicious, but also very sensitive to overcooking. Okay. There's a seam that runs down the middle of it. Sometimes you'll see these long little strips of it. Sure. We leave it whole so you can get a beautiful char on the outside and then slice into it. It, it makes it so you can keep it more rare. Char the outside, I like that crust on there. Got it. Next up front, we have a tri-tip. Famous to anybody who's ever been to California. Yeah, it is a typical Santa Maria style, cooked over hot coals. It actually comes from the crotch area. Oh of the animal. I actually have never known where it comes from because I've heard, oh, it's like part of the sirloin. It's, I have no idea. It, it is part of the sirloin. So it actually goes up in the loin primal of the beef all the way into the round. Wow. So it's one of the difficult cuts. If you're blocking out a beef, you have to be very careful not to cut this thing directly in half oh. because this part sits over your sirloin, your top yep. sirloin. This part sits over the knuckle or the sirloin tip. Okay. So it's a unique cut. It is amazing. It is delicious. A high heat, seared, chimichurri all over it, deliciousness. Definitely chimichurri. The one advantage that I think is great about the tri-tip mm -hmm. is if you have a crowd that all likes their steak cooked differently, Oh uh, yeah. it's the one cut you have well done all the way to rare. Very good point. <laughs> uh, last but not least, we have the bavette, also known as the flap of the beef. Right. The bavette lives right underneath the flank steak in okay. the loin primal of the beef. Traditionally, it was sold as like a large skirt steak. Hmm. It has similar muscle fibers, those really thick, ropey muscle oh, fibers. Okay. So it takes really well to marination. It'll okay. absorb it. It'll hold up to it, slice against the grain. Right. Your jaw will thank you for it later. <laughs> this is also a classic in like a bistro steak frite. Oh, okay. This is one of those cuts that's used. The bavette is actually the belly part, so it's flopping around. It's not really working too wow. much. They do have big bellies. They do have big bellies. I probably have a bavette like that. <laughs> now, what changed between the historical butcher's cuts and the modern seam butchery butcher's cuts? One thing I think it's probably important to introduce is butcher's cuts 
are cuts that were traditionally taken home by the butcher. They weren't put out for sale because they would be used for something of lesser value like ground beef. And so they said, you know what? We're not gonna grind this into ground beef. This is a great cut. I'm gonna take it home and cook it for my family instead. These modern day seam butchery, what, what was the change that made this possible or made this favorable to traditional historic butcher's cuts? The reason why we start to see these individual muscles and this whole seam butchery blow up in popularity is because animals have gotten much larger over the past 50 years. Beef, when they were brought into harvest, used to be about 800, 900 pounds. <clears throat> now in modern day beef, when they're ready for harvest, they're about 1,300 pounds. Big fellas. And this is simply through genetics and over the years, picking the biggest, fattest one that we choose. Okay. And the reason we have done that, we've actually been able to produce less animals, but more meat on the onset of it. Hmm. And with that, we're able to look into this animal and we can pull out individual muscles and treat them the special way that they should be treated. And with that, we're able to see cuts like the Terrace Major, okay. which comes from the shoulder. It sits right on top of the clawed heart. And it is a, a unique cut to get out because traditionally you would saw straight through it to block your chuck from your arm, your brisket. Oh. But if you do that, you cut this thing straight in half. Oh, okay. So we actually block and butcher our beef in a unique way just for that muscle right there. Okay. Terrace Major is a phenomenal, delicious, tender cut. It has those really thin muscle fibers. Okay. It gets a little bit of marbling into it, but because it's in a hardworking area, it's going to develop more flavor. Okay. This is one of those cuts that turns into shoe leather cooked past medium, though. It okay. gets really, really, really tough if you cook it past medium. This is another one of those bistro steaks. It is a perfect little steak mm. for steak free. A little bit of demi or bordelaise sauce over okay. the top of it. Phenomenal stuff. Next up right here, we have something called a Merlot steak. Okay. Merlot steak is a very unique new cut. Can I guess where it comes from? Absolutely. I'm going to guess, first off, front half of the animal. I meant back half of the animal? Yep, yep, yep. Nailed yep. it. Is it from somewhere in the round? That is, yep. Okay, that's all I know. Okay, well. I, I, I wish I could be more specific. So the round is the back leg of the animal. If you go at the hip, uh, that's where your, your loin starts to go up. So it's okay. below the hip, which is the H bone. A-I-T-C-H, not like the letter oh. H. Oh, uh, all right. H bone. And then if you go down, that's the round. So that's the okay. whole piece. That's where you get your like top round roast, your roast beef stuff. It's okay. really, really lean. Right. Normally we're not getting steaks out of there, except at places like Porter Road where we practice seam butchery. This cut, the Merlot cut, comes from the heel, which okay. is an extremely tough piece that sits all the way down at the top or the bottom, depending on if it's hanging or it's walking. Oh, fair um, But it's all the way down low and it the heel, you actually have to peel through all of these layers of different muscles. And then okay. once you get the main muscle, you have to seam it out again because there's a piece of silver skin that runs down the middle. Okay. But the work that we put into it is definitely all worth right. the squeeze. It is an incredibly flavorful, super lean cut, right. but it has tons of great flavor. It's really irony, really minerally. For those of you health nuts out of there, the Merlot steak, is your steak of choice. So is, is that just because it's the leanest one out there? You're going to get the lots leanest. of protein, not much fat? Yeah. I Got guess it. if you're one of those health nuts. Right, right. I should specify. Behind that, we have a very popular but still extremely modern cut. This is the flat iron. Oh, okay. So the flat iron actually lives right underneath the scapula or the, the paddle bone of the shoulder. Okay. There's a shark fin that kind of comes up and it lives right in there. This is a cut that was traditionally still in the seven bone chuck roast that you see in those old Betty Crocker oh. cookbooks Julia ta Child talks about. Okay. That cut is the second most tender cut in the entire animal. Good to know. I had no idea. It is amazing. It is delicious. It has those extremely thin muscle fibers, but it is a pain in the butt to clean. It is a, a really thick piece that comes out of the blade stake. The blade stake has a piece of silver skin that runs right down the middle of it. You have to fillet that roast straight down the middle and you produce two flat iron steaks out of it. Okay. Extremely hard cut to get right. But our butchers are incredibly skilled and incredibly passionate. So they're able to produce these delicious flat iron steaks. And this cut 
is the most forgivable cut cooked past medium. Really? Yes. Okay, I thought you were going to tell me it's the second most tender cut. But if nope. you go in, like a hair or past medium rare, it's ruined. No, so this wow. is the cut where if you have that family member that only eats well done steaks, they will love you if you introduce them to the flower. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah. And this one, I do recognize. This the one. Volcano shank. This one, you, this guy did amazing work with. If you haven't watched that video, absolutely need to check it out. You killed that cut. Uh, well, thank you. Thank, well, to me, it was like, this is something totally different. So it was fun. And it's kind of different than when I do a brisket, when I'm thinking about trying to render a bunch of fat. Here I'm thinking about breaking down the collagen to form gelatin and so you have this tremendously succulent awesome looking thing with this huge bone sticking out of it so it's like a showpiece in and of itself and then the food itself is incredible as a matter of fact my wife said it was her favorite thing that i think i'd ever barbecued so this cut right here it's a french volcano shank it comes from the four shank of the animal okay so we only cut it from the four shank so we get a nice meaty piece it is incredibly tough but like you did in that video, once you break that down, yeah. all of that connective tissue turns into gelatin. It becomes lip smacking oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is so freaking delicious. Uh, barbecued, smoked, any kind of low and slow, mm -hmm. this cut is phenomenal for. And it's simply just that four shank that we French out. There's still that delicious marrow inside. Oh, okay, that'll cook out too. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question on my arm. I have two bones right here. Yep. Right? Why is there only one big bone in there? Because our butchers are very passionate and take the time to remove that second bone. That's what that mark is? That's what that ah. mark is. So that bone is actually in there. We take the saw, sometimes you'll they get a little excited, but we'll take the saw and they actually take another knife and they slam it in there to break it off. Oh, wow. So everything we do at Porter Road there is a little bit more love, a little bit more passion, and a little bit more care, starting at the farm all the way up to what we do here and being able to work with people like you who help show case the quality product and how delicious it can truly be. Right, the thing that sticks out to me about all of these cuts is that they're all done with the customer in mind. It's, we don't wanna take this cut and turn it into something lesser. We want it to really shine for everything that it's worth. And so for me, if this were used in ground beef, it would be a waste of such a <laughs> tremendous cut. It's so much fun to cook and it's so good. Now, I feel like I have to try this flat iron steak because it's the second most tender cut. I love tender and I love beef, so it sounds like a winner to me. And then I'm just fascinated by this Merlot steak. So would that come from the calf of the animal? They call it the heel, right. but it would be, yeah, it would be the calf. Got so it. it's, it's a collection of muscles. Almost always it's ground beef. The round, you get a few cuts out of it, I mean, the most common that we know out of the round is the top round. That's where you right. get your roast beef. Bottom round, which is actually the most tender of the rounds. Okay. It's a good roast beef one. Eye of round, we use for jerky. It's like a nice cylinder. Oh. And then you have the sirloin tip or the knuckle. Sirloin tip, if you ever see it at a grocery store and it's cut into steaks, walk by. Just don't look at it. It is an extremely <laughs> tough cut. It has the name sirloin in it, but it is very misleading. And it okay. just really shouldn't be used as a steak unless if you plan on sous vide it for like two hours before you ever char it or grill it or whatever. Got it. Okay, so we've seen these cuts after they're already separated out, but can you show us maybe with a bigger chunk how you can take something that looks like one thing to the untrained eye and turn it into multiple different cuts? Absolutely, that's what, what I do. Wanna, perfect. What do you wanna do? Um, so I think the ones we're missing out of here that are my absolute favorite come from the chuck roll. Okay. So a chuck roll is something you see at the grocery store all the time. It's your crock pot cooking thing. Right. But the thing we do at Porter Road is we appreciate every cut for their uniqueness and who they are. Okay. So with that, we take a chuck where at grocery store it is one cut. Okay. We at Porter Road get six different cuts out of it. And we're going to show you every single one of those cuts. We're going to show you what seam butchery is and what we do every day on a much larger scale to make sure that y'all's dinner and your quality of cook is always as maximum and perfect as it can possibly be. Awesome, let's do it. I don't think I've ever seen butchery like this in person. All right, James, I'm looking at this humongous chunk of meat right here. How do you first just get your orientation with something like this? This is a subprimal chuck roll. It actually comes from 
this part of the shoulder up here, it's on top okay. of the blade stake. A comparable cut to this mm -hmm. would be like the copa or the pork butt. Oh, pork, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a much bigger version of it. This piece right here sits on top of the scapula or the paddle bone. Okay. So underneath it lives our mock tender and our flat iron. Zipping that across the line is that seven bone chuck roast that you saw way back in the day. Uh, that is a shame because it has all of these beautiful, unique, wonderful cuts in it. Okay, so it's a shame that you'd cook them all the same way when they could each shine independently, exactly. cooked properly. Cooked properly, yeah. Right, okay. And this particular cut right here, this is where the head would be. Okay. And then it would be attached to the other side this way. So out here would be the outside of its shoulder. Its head would be back here. And then down here is where the ribeyes would start. Uh, okay. So there's one continuous muscle that starts at the neck and goes all the way down to the tail. That's your neck roast, your chuck roast, your chuck eyes, your rib eyes, your strip steak, and your sirloin. Okay, so why does this get turned into roasts, whereas that same muscle, as it continues, is, you know, a steak and rib eyes? You need to ask everybody else, because at Porter Road, we treat, okay. treat them the way they all should right. be treated. And we cut out all of these individual muscles, and I'll show you how we seam it out. And we follow that seam and create all of these unique, wonderful cuts that you can find at PorterRoad.com. There you go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off the eye part of the chuck roll. Okay. So we're going to remove the eye part. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow a seam that goes all the way down here. First thing we do when we find seam butchery is we're gonna cut in and we're gonna look for that, that seam. And is that a seam of fat that you're after? Or is it a seam of connective tissue, fascia? What is it? So generally speaking, when we're looking for it, we are trying to find a seam that there is silver skin in. If you notice, when we're cutting, a lot of the times we're cutting with just the tip of our knife and we're using a lot of our finger to separate it out and release it from the rest of the chuck block. So what we've done, we have exposed that seam and we're able to peel back. And right here, we are removing hmm. the eye from the chuck flat. So, by following the seam, we were able to remove the roll from the flat. What we're going to do is clean up the roll slightly. This is a huge tendon that runs down the neck. Really responsible to hold the head up and stuff like that? Or? Yep, yep. Got it. So what we're going to do is simply just cut a stake here. At Porter Road, we shoot for 12 ounces, and then we'll tie it up so that way it stays together as we cook. But what you have here is your eye, and then that is your um, spinalis. Your cap, your spinalis, yeah. You should only get three. We're gonna cut this up. This is where we get our chuck roast from. Okay. So I'm simply gonna cut this guy in half, and then what we do for uniformity, we'll actually butterfly this piece. So we're gonna cut about 90% down, oh. and then fold it over and tie it up. Gotcha. <laughs> I was kind of wondering what was going on with that. Now that makes complete sense because the twine holds it in place, but when you're cooking it, you can kind of wiggle it and say, oh wait, the, those aren't actually connected. Nope. Gotcha. So we, again, to maximize the end consumer's meal, what we try to do is always think about how is it going to cook best? This piece of meat right here, you can see is real uneven. Right. It's wider than it is thick. This piece, is much more even, so it's gonna right. have a more even cook time. So, chuck roast, we get two Excellent. of those out of every single chuck roll, same thing. So, Boom. so far, we are at two cuts. Chuck flat, we're gonna get four different cuts out of it. This piece right here is called the Sierra steak. If you're a household of two and don't need a whole flank steak, mm. Sierra steak's a great alternative. It's way less expensive. Because of the muscle fibers, it has those thick ropes. 
It's going to take great to marination. Cut against the grain. Use it for your fajitas. Ooh. Phenomenal, phenomenal cut. So this is high heat searing Maillard reaction that you're after? Yes. Got it. Absolutely. All the bits, everything we always take off that is edible is going to be utilized, uh, making sure that we appreciate the animal's life that we've taken. We appreciate the hard work of the farmer and make sure we maximize the carcass every single time. We're removing the silver skin and also a little bit of the outside fat. Uh -huh. Like a little mini flake steak. Yeah, that's beautiful. So sear this thing off and then cut against the grain. You can see the really thick muscle fibers. Thick muscle fibers are gonna need to be held together with more connective tissue. Mm -hmm. So that's why it takes really great to marination. <laughs> Chuck flap. One of the more difficult cuts that our butchers interact with. Simply clean off the silver skin, clean off the fat. So what we've done is we've cleaned up our chuck flap. You've noticed okay. that I've kept it as whole as possible. This piece right in the middle right here, we call it the heart. This is where you're gonna get your Denver steaks. Oh, okay. So what we're gonna do is start to trim away these outside pieces. And this is where we're gonna get our boneless short ribs hmm. and our um, stew meat. So what we're gonna do here is take that, that middle center heart piece and cut it and look at oh, that how looks familiar. beautiful that is. Gorgeous. At Border Road, we will take it, we'll cut it into either a six ounce or a 12 ounce steak. And there's number four. That looks good. We're gonna have a boneless short rib. It's gonna have a lot of that, that meat, that marbling, that fat that goes throughout it. And then last but not least, we take our trimmings, cut them into little cubes. And this is where you're gonna get your stew meat from at Porter Road. If you buy stew meat, you're gonna get it from the chuck flap or the brisket. That's gonna be the two places where mm -hmm. we cut our stew meat from. And presto. I guess, I guess the way it. to handle that is pretty self-explanatory. Let me see if I got them all down here. So we got stew meat, Yep. low and slow, boneless short rib, Low and slow. Yep. We have Denver steak, low and slow or hot and fast. Yep. Then we have chuck eye. Yep. Then we have chuck roast. Fast. Oh, so chuck eye like a ribeye, hot and exactly fast. Exactly like a ribeye. Okay. Then we have chuck roast. Then you're going to go low and slow, break down all that connective tissue, have just really rich flavor. Yep. And then finally, Sierra, hot and fast. Hot and fast. All right. Nice. You passed the test. So, Grocery store, you get one cut, chuck roast out of it, Porter Road, we get six. We're able to maximize the carcass. We're able to treat every single muscle the way it should be, special and unique. And you give the customer the opportunity to have different cuts, different experiences, and cook it the way that it's gonna really shine. Absolutely. Perfect, I feel like I have to cook all these now. <laughs> but um, this chuck roast looks really good. What do you say we fire up a grill, cook a chuck roast? It's Absolutely. gonna be a little longer, but that's what I most want to eat. Well, yeah, if we, we take that low and slow like you do on your channel often, we let it shine. It is going to be chipped beef. It'll be the best version of pulled meat oh, yeah. that you've ever had. So let's go fire up a grill and get this thing started. You got any wood? Yeah. All right, perfect. Let's do it.
and oh, juicy. Yeah. Let's Moist, tender, phenomenal. If I took this, chopped it up, made a sandwich, phenomenal. But eating this, I don't get that heavy feeling, like when I'm eating a brisket, where I'm like, if I keep eating too much of this, I'm gonna feel a little sick. Yep. I feel like I could eat a full meal of that and be like, I feel great. I'm gonna go do whatever I want. It has that beefiness up front. You can add spice and flavor to it with the rub and the smoke. Very simple process. You don't have to wait around forever like a brisket. You don't have to worry about the intricacies of that process. Very, very pleased with that. I really appreciate that you walked me through the process of how you break down these cuts and really allow them to shine in their own right. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't checked out Ant's channel, go check it out. He does really cool barbecue stuff. I really enjoy the stuff that he puts out. It's unique and he gives a different perspective. So thank you guys. I wanna thank you, James. Appreciate it, it's been a privilege. And thank you, Ant, for coming to be a guest taste tester. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's a wrap. I am stuffed. I have enough beef in me to last me all the way to Austin. And again, if you guys wanna win this smoker, go to getentertowin.com slash madscientistbbq or click on the link in the description. I wanna see one of you guys win it and cook a bunch of food on it. So good luck and I'll see you guys in the next video.